So what we have is, let's go and look at number 8. So number 8 is y is less than negative 2x plus 3. This is page 33. So we have y is less than negative 2x plus 3, and y is less than or equal to x minus 2. So what we need to do is we need to graph both of these. And fortunately for number 8, we at least have them in slope-intercept form, right? Forget about the inequality sign for a second. Let's just remember what when we have a, uh, an inequality or an equation. When we have it solved for y, we say it's in this form, y equals mx plus b. I'm saying forget about the inequality sign. We just want to look at what the form our inequality is in. And it's in this format, right? However, this is an equation and these are inequalities. However, when it's in this format, when you have it solved for y, we have our important points. We have m as our slope and b as our y-intercept. And that's very, very, very important for us to be able to take a look at. So when I'm graphing inequalities, the first thing I always want to do is just graph them. And then I'll, deal, and then I'll go back and worry about the inequality symbol. So let's just graph and see what the shape of our line, if it's going to be dash or solid, is going to look like. So first one. We now we need to determine what our y-intercept is, right? Which is our b. So for the first equation, it's going to be 3. So I'm going to go up 3. 1, 2, 3. And I make a nice little dot. All right? Then the slope of this one is negative 2 over 1, right? We want to write our slope as our ratio, um, change in y over your change in x. So since it's negative 2 um, over 1, I'm going to go down 2 to the right 1. Down 2 to the right 1. So you can see you're going to have a shape of a line that's going to look like this. Now remember, whenever it's less than, if you guys remember when we did, um, when we did inequalities to a single variable, whenever it was less than or greater than, do we have an open or a closed circle or point? Open. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we don't have any circle points on this, right? How we have a line. So therefore, to create an open line, which means your points on the line are not going to be a part of your solution, what we do is we create a dashed line. Okay. Now we'll talk about the shade in here in a second. The next one it has a y-intercept of negative 2. So I go down to negative 2. Let me just show these points. 0, negative 2. And, but this one does not have a number in front, at least that's not visible. So remember that when we do not have a number in front, we know our coefficient can always be 1. And to write that as a fraction, we can always write 1 over 1. So that means the slope is up 1 to the right 1, up 1 to the right 1. And you notice this one is less than or equal to. So in a, on a dot, that'd be a closed solution point. However, we're talking about a solution boundary line, so it's going to be a solid line. So it's going to look something like that. OK? So now, ladies and gentlemen, what we want to do is, so is everybody cool with that? You just need to graph and then determine if it's solid or um, dashed. OK? That's all you guys had to do. Now, the last part, though, to get full credit for this, you had to go and find out where do you shade. Because right now, all we're doing is we're just testing the solutions of the line. But inequalities, we need to be slushing our points to see what else is going to make it true. So the best solution point ever created to choose is going to be 0, 0, unless your line goes through 0, 0. Then you have to choose another point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to test 0, 0 for both equations. And what you do is you just plug in 0 in for x, and you plug 0 in for y. And you just test it. And you determine, is my point 0, 0 true or false for each problem? So that's a positive 3, right? OK, so my first equation right here, was, which was my dashed line. So I'm going to write y equals, I'm sorry, y not equals, y is less than negative 2x plus 3. Therefore, I remember that's that equation. When I plug in 0, 0, I get 0 is less than 3. Is that true or false? True. So that means all points that are below or to the left of that line are going to be true. So I'm going to graph them little nice little lines. Okay, All points for that inequality. So you're going to shade that separately. Then we look at our next point which our next line, which is right here, which was y is less than or equal to x minus 2. When I test 0, 0, I get 0 is less than or equal to negative 2. Is that true or false? False. So that means since that point's false, that means all the lines now on the other side are going to be true. So you graph all the lines on the other side of 0, 0. 
And then where is the only part of this graph where you have both of your equations where the solution is true for both equations or both inequalities or both, so um, both lines? This region, right? Do you guys see? This is the only region where it's true for both of them. So you can just kind of show like that. You can probably take your eraser and erase. So there you go. There's our feasible region. Yes? That's perfectly fine. As long as you can make sure um, that you show me what is the feasible region and it makes. And remember, it's all about communication, right? As long as you can communicate to me where your feasible region is, then it'll work. All right? And obviously, clarity is going to be a big part of that. Yes? Good? Any other questions on that? No? Okay.